another thing we noticed is uh, you know it's not this is not really a con I would say this is an interesting point uh, which is <coughs> it's <laughs> a good point i like that one <laughs> i'm so glad you brought that up because that is the most difficult thing i had to deal with the entire trip here <laughs> kimcha guys and welcome to my channel my name is Druti, and i'm originally from india i made it a mission to explore more of the world but in a slower more focused manner so join me, my boyfriend Kevin, and my boo boo Pilu on this journey to explore the gorgeous state of Oaxaca, where we will be starting off from Oaxaca City before making it all the way down to the coast. So we are in a nice little hidden courtyard uh, in an alley near our second Airbnb. And there's a bunch of little kitty cats. There's the first one. And there's... Man, tree. Hi, baby. Hi. Don't be scared. Hi. Get there. There's one here. And there's one here. Oh. So one of the other things we also found is that the sidewalks are very, very narrow. That means, say, me and him are going somewhere. We usually cannot walk side by side. It can only accommodate one person. And uh, there's also, uh, I think we covered that point in one of our videos, is that they don't cut down the trees. The tr trees kind of outgrow the sidewalks. Yeah, and that's probably most of the time what it is. Yeah, so there's heavy traffic coming towards you many a times, and then there's a one lane, like a narrow sidewalk, and you have to kind of like, scoot around the trees like a, <laughs> like a weirdo and one of the other things that we found very weird is that people many a times are just standing on the sidewalk talking to someone and when they see you coming or they notice that you're coming they do not budge to move they don't move out of your way so you have to kind of walk on the street like i found it so bizarre because they're just randomly talking blocking the sidewalk and uh, yet they don't move out of the way yeah. Uh, and one of our friends told us that you should say con permission uh, and they might move out of the way we haven't gotten a chance to use it on anyone but it's just you know I, it's strange uh, compared to how you see in the US it's a uh, it's a weird thing even foreigners do that so it's a it's a strange thing to see mm -hmm. Another thing is that we have, uh, you know, if you're coming from the US, you kind of have, if you're a pedestrian, you have right of, the, right of way. In India, not so much. The bigger the vehicle, the more right you have. Here, I, we kind of got, I mean, I haven't been to India in a while, so we kind of got used to the US way of having the right of the way if you're a pedestrian. But when you're crossing, even on a zebra crossing, all the vehicles are hauling at you, you know, and they would stop but at the very end like you would get freaked out it's not like they start breaking uh, way before they reach you they break right at the moment <laughs> then and they, it gives you a heart attack yeah like then they signal for you to cross yeah yeah so it's a it's a pretty terrifying experience if you're like me we have to use the bathroom a lot and every time it feels like i go for a walk i have to use the bathroom i don't know maybe i have a small bladder or maybe something's wrong with me i don't know so uh, we do come across a lot of bathrooms. Sometimes you can use them for free, but a lot of them you have to pay for. Most of them. Yeah, most of them. So it's like you have to buy something at their shop or something at their cafe. Or, or you just pay for them. Like yeah. in the in the US you're used to stopping at a gas station and just using the restrooms without buying anything. But I've heard that in Europe as well you have to pay to use the restrooms and it seems to be the same case with uh, Oaxaca at least I wouldn't say all of Mexico we don't know but at least with Oaxaca you have to pay to use the restroom mm -hmm. another topic that uh, should be we need to regard is the Google Maps system here um, we've rented a car borrowed a car a few times and try to drive out to a few sites and you get lost and Google Maps doesn't really help 
Uh, sometimes it tells you where to go, but it doesn't give you the exact location. So be very aware, look for signs. We've learned to look for signs when we're trying to... Hard uh, way, hard way. Yeah. So like, the, what we did was a combination of looking for street signs and asking people. Mm -hmm. So, because for example, Mitla or Hirve, El Agua, very, very <laughs> tough. It took us four or five trials to get to that point. So yeah, we drove around in circles and it was just like we weren't going anywhere and we couldn't figure out what was going on. Google Maps just kept telling us to go a certain direction and it was not sending us to the right area. So then we just waste all this time driving around in circles. Another thing is you look on Google for timings, uh, you know, office timings or when something is open, they're not necessarily accurate. Basically, all the information on Google, you have to double check for any facilities or restaurants or gyms. We look at timings and they're not necessarily correct. They, those things might be closed and, and okay. Google Maps might be showing you something else. Yeah. So, back on the topic of driving cars around here, uh, we noticed when we drove a few times that it's not like the US. Um, it's not like you have a, a double line in the middle and you can't pass here they have that line but there's a dotted line on the side for the shoulder which people drive in the middle of and they uh, people pass them go around them even drive in the other side of the road just to get around people and it seems to be like a frequent thing it's like a normal way that they they drive so just take it with caution just, you know the highways we mentioned earlier they have speed bumps um, so it's just a precaution you take while driving on the highways around here. I mean, it's a way of life. I mean, it, they can get around it. There's organized chaos, as, as we said before. But we, for us, it's tougher, you mm -hmm. know, because we are not used to that kind of driving. They know kind of what they are doing. But for us to adjust to it is, is the tough part. So driving in the highways is one thing, but driving in the city is a completely different factor. There's a lot of one ways which you have to pay attention to. And we learned that you have to look, there's arrows on the corner of streets that will tell you which way to go. And if that doesn't help, there are cars parked in a certain direction. And then you follow the way those cars go. And many a times local people drive in the opposite direction. They yeah. don't follow the one ways. It's kind of how I saw it in Puerto Rico as well. So if you don't know the language, you don't understand the signs, that's a very dangerous thing dangerous situation to be in in terms of driving in the city the trash cans are very small and especially with such a high number of tourists there just isn't enough room as you can see here very small trash can and there's a bunch of trash down there so it's kind of a problem so another one is a is a smaller con from from my perspective and it's for I think it's more for the ladies, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but it is full length mirrors, the lack thereof. Um, in the Airbnbs we have uh, been to, and even when I visited Mexico, every time I visited, I visited twice before for longer terms, and I, I, I just didn't find any full length mirrors. So every time I wear some clothes in the previous Airbnb, I would bend down and look at myself, and Kevin would always laugh because I, you just cannot see what you really look like with that combination of clothes or just how it fits and all that. So it's a, it's a small con, but it is, it is a con. Another thing we noticed is, uh, you know, it's not, this is not really a con, I would say. This is an interesting point, uh, which is... It's <laughs> <laughs> a good point. I like that one. <laughs> I'm so glad you brought that up because that is the most difficult thing I had to deal with the entire trip here. <laughs> Let's not even talk about your points. Then. I know, my points are like unspeakable. <laughs> not shareable with the public. <laughs> I'm sure everybody does it, but nobody speaks about it. So the point is uh, to assume that uh, everything will be cheaper in, in Mexico. For example, uh, the the microphone we bought for our phones or whatever for video making, right? They're much cheaper in the U.S. compared to Mexico, and I presume they because they ship it from the U.S. That's our guess. We could be wrong. The hair oil that we use a lot uh, that's 
like fifty dollars here, mm -hmm. and it's like seven dollars in the U.S. So to assume that we just assumed things that everything will be cheaper in Mexico, no. So our recommendation is that if something is really important to you, uh, either bring it beforehand or um, do the research. Will this be cheaper in Mexico? Where can I get it from? So on and so forth. There's a bunch of products you cannot get on Amazon. For example, I couldn't find, but um, well, this isn't an uh, Amazon thing, but in Chadrawi, I couldn't find, what's the face wash? We, Neutrogena. Yeah. We couldn't find Neutrogena. We could, we could barely find hair oil. To assume you'll get all the products, well, you know, which we didn't assume, but we just thought these are basic pro products you get in the US and so these would be available in Mexico. No, they're not necessarily available. So, you know, before you do a long term trip like this or even a short term trip, if something is really important to you, write a list down and then research. Will this be available in Mexico as a first step? And second step is, will this be cheaper in Mexico? Because that's not necessarily the case. Yeah, but we, in terms of necessities are usually cheap depending on where you go. If you go to like a supermarket or a giant grocery chain, it's going to be a little bit more expensive than going to a smaller market. So make sure you you take advantage of these smaller markets because you can buy fruits and vegetables for at least half or a quarter of the price that you find in giant supermarkets. That's another point though. Oh. But still. Yeah. It's well, cool. Mm. It's good to reiterate. Yes. We're just pounding it in your head. Okay. So uh, the other thing I want to talk about is gym etiquettes. Um, and this is uh, just in regarding to one gym that we have been to. I haven't experienced it in the second gym that we joined. But say you are doing a set uh, and you take a little bit of a break, then someone kind of requests you or, yeah, they request you if they can do the set. And that kind of is, first of all, is annoying because it's COVID. You clean things up and then if they do the set in between your set, you have to clean it again. But what happened to me is that happened and then as I went back to do my set, another girl kind of changed the weights and she crept in and started doing her set. So it was just so, I was dumbfounded. I'm like, this is really weird and I walked out. But that happened to me another time at the gym too, where I was doing my set, then there was another girl who asked me if she could do a set and I was like, sorry, I'll just finish in 10 minutes. And she made such a horrible face and she stood behind me breathing down my neck. And I, you know, that kind of helped because I really pushed myself to do as many reps as possible. But it was pretty obnoxious. And uh, we met two uh, people from, uh, you know, from Mexico, uh, from Mexico City. And I was very curious because I had not seen this anywhere else happen. And I know you have a different opinion, but I have not experienced this anywhere else, not in the US. So I asked them if that is a thing here. And they said, yes, it is a thing that people interrupt you in between your sets to do their set. Uh, and sometimes people are using various machines. So maybe they were using that machine, then they're using another machine and they think they that that's their machine to use because that's their whole five uh, different exercises in a set or whatever that thought process is but they don't think there is anything wrong with it and I found it really obnoxious I really this is a strong con from my aspect because it really really I was very infuriated by by that behavior mm. and a uh, different side my argument towards that is I've been to tons of gyms and all different types of gyms and you're talking I've, about the US I in the US yes yeah. and I've encountered similar situations and what happens is people they run circuits and they do once one set on a machinery and then they do it on another machinery that's what a circuit is you do it that several times to do your workout um, if you so happen to get into their get system into, of circuits yeah their system of, of circuits yeah and with the quotes you're like interfering with their workout because they're they claim like five things to work out on to me i would do it just to because i wanted to use the thing so i'll do my set and my reps 
and if they were coming around and wanted to use and finish up their set i would just be like hey just jump in you know just make sure you switch the weights back to the way you had it and um it's just you know it's gym etiquette but um it just what are you trying to say you're like getting lost in your own words because i'm saying sometimes from what you encounter was a bit aggressive yes but compared that, to what but what I'm, you were trying to say is that happens in the u.s too but yes. it's not that aggressive it yeah i mean it depends on the person is what it comes down to how often does that happen to you i mean just recently it hasn't happened in a while but when i back when i used to work out like once or twice a day so 15 years ago yeah um, it would happen all the time. So it's nothing out of the norm. It's just I think it is out of the norm. Just saying, I've never experienced it. I didn't work out twice a day, but I worked out all throughout like my 20s and 30s. I've never, ever experienced that kind of um, entitlement to... Yeah, it's an entitlement. It's that gym they, entitlement. It's a g- entitlement that I... This is you have to give this to me because I'm asking for it and even though someone is like just not even done with their set I, I find find it ridiculous but yeah.